Okay, so 2.6 and 2.7 are a little bit different. 2.6 and 7 are combined together, and we are going to be looking at how to graph functions that are not lines anymore. So these are going to be these are going to be curves. They might be different shapes, they might be a U, different curves. Okay, but these are nonlinear functions. So this is something that is new for most of you. When we go to graph these, the first thing we do is we have to figure out what the graph looks like. These are all in the back cover of our textbook. So if you look in the back cover of your textbook, you will see these graphs. If you didn't bring your textbook with you, that's okay, because I'll put the graphs up here. These are the basic graphs. Now, we've already covered the identity, because that's what we covered um, way back in the first part of Chapter 2. So we did that way earlier, the identity. We have the squaring function. That's when you have x squared. Okay, so if you have x squared, it's a squaring function, and it makes a u. Then we have a cube function. Okay, it looks like that. The square root graph is a little bit different. Cube root looks like that. Absolute value makes a v, and we'll talk about the greatest integer later on today. These are the basic graphs, so we'll look at these last two later on, but these, these top six, these are the ones we're going to be using. So we're going to start graphing these, and we're going to look at a very, very simple one to begin with. Okay, so we're going to learn how to graph this. Now again, this is something that is new for most of you. This is not a line anymore. This is going to be a curve. So the first thing that we do is we try to figure out what the basic shape of the graph is and what operation is involved with that, that x. It's underneath the square root, right? So this is going to be the square root graph. And if you look in the back cover of your textbook, the square root graph looks like that. Okay, back cover. Right, there it is. Okay, I always draw a picture of it over to the side, so we'll see it. Now, why does it look like this? It looks like this because what operation is involved with your x square root. So the graph needs to look like that. Now the 4 is like your slope. So this 4 is going to be like the slope. And it's 4 over 1. So we're going to go up 4 and over 1. Where are we going to start at? Yep, 0, 0, because there's no number on the end. If there was a number on the end, which we'll do in a moment, we would move up or down. But in this case, there's no number, so we start at 0, 0. What am I going to do from the 0, 0? I am going to go up what? Up 4 and over 1. So that makes my new point 1, 4, and I'm going to connect it together. Connect them together with the curve. It needs to look like this as a general shape. So there's my new graph. Now, what happened to my graph versus the original? This is the original here. What happened to this one? It's four times as tall, right? Why is it four, four times as tall? It's been stretched vertically four, four times. Why? Because of the four in front. Okay, let's do another one. This one I'm going to put a number on the end. And we'll do a, an x squared. Okay. 
Okay, so let's try to graph this one. So the first thing we do is we look at it and we see what operation is involved. It's a square, okay? And so the square graph looks like this. Okay, from the back cover, remember it makes a U, and that's X squared. Okay, so is everyone okay with that? So first thing we do is we look at the operation, and what operation is involved? X squared. So we go to the back cover of our textbook. We find the one that's the square graph, and that's what it's going to look like when we're done. Then we look at all the pieces. Now the 5, okay, the 5 is located on the end. And this 5 is going to make it move up 5 units. Because it's on the end. So that means now we are going to start at 0, 5. Because it's been moved up 5 units. Because that 5 tells me how far to go up. And the 2, again, is like your slope, so that's 2 over 1. So up 2 over 1. Where do we start at? We start at 1, 5. So that's, oh, sorry, not 1, 5, uh, 0, 5. Right? We start at 0, 5, so that's at 0, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What's my next point going to be? We're going to go up 2 over 1. So up 2, yep, very good work, would be 1, 7, isn't it? Right, over 1, up 7. Curve it. But we're not done yet. Because this is only what? Only half of it. How do we get the other side? We do the opposite. Okay, we go back to where we started from, and we're going to go up 2, but we're going to go back 1. So up 2, back 1. And so that makes my next point minus 1, 7. And then when I connect them together, it looks like the U that we need. Okay? Uh huh. Okay, we always start back here at that spot. So we're going to start right here at the 0, 5. Now, we know the graph needs to look like this, right? And so the first one I got was 1, 7. And that made that. Now the other side is going to be a reflection, the opposite. So it's going to be at minus 1, because you went back 1, up 7. So it makes a dot right there. And then when I connect them all together, I get my curve. Okay, just... The main thing is, make sure you start at 0, 5, and make sure it looks like a U. Because a square makes it a U. Uh -huh. Well, it would, okay. We haven't moved it left to right in. This one is only moving it up. So we always go back to where we start from. So if it would have been over here, we would start back there. Move it up and make a U from there. Okay, but we, we first figure out where we need to start from. Okay, and in this case... We didn't move it left or right, we only moved it up 5. So that means we're going to start at 0, 5. Let's do another one. Let's try to graph f of x equals minus 3, absolute value of x, minus 1. So first thing I would want to do is I would want to go to the back cover of the textbook and I look up the function. Now, what operation are we looking at? Absolute value. Okay? And so the absolute value looks like that. So it's going to make a V. Is everyone okay with that? So our graph looks like a V. Not a U, it looks like a V.
And I always just write it to the side as a reference. So this is what it should look like. At the end, it's going to look something similar to that. Now, what about the minus 1? It's negative, so instead of it going up, you're correct, it's going to go down. So again, where are we going to start at? Yep, 0, negative 1. And from that, we're going to go down 3, right, because it's negative, over 1. So we'll plot our first point, which is at 0, negative 1. So that is here. Why is it going to be upside down? See, the original looks like a V like this. Ours is going to be like that. Why is ours going to be upside down? Because the negative, right? That's going to flip it over. So it flips it upside down. So this is where we start at. And we're going to have to go down one, two, three units. Forward one. So it makes a second dot there. And that's going to be at about one, comma, negative four. When we connect them, we use a straight line instead of a curve because it needs to make a V. Where do we get the other half from? Yep, we flip it over, right? And you can count points and do all that if you want to, but it should be down four, back one again, so it should be at about minus one, minus four for the other side, and it should make a V like that. So let's talk about what we did. That one on the end, what did that do? Okay, that moved the graph down, didn't it? Right, moved it down. What about the minus three? Instead of it being a V like this, what did it do? It became a V like that. Okay, so it flipped it upside down. It also made it what? More narrow, because the minus three. So the minus flipped over and the three actually made it more narrow. Let's try another one. Okay, so we want to graph a cube function. Now this is a little bit different looking graph. We want to graph a cube. So what's the cube graph look like? x cubed, right? So a cube graph looks like that. So go to the back cover of your textbook. Right? They're all here. So when you do your homework, make sure you have your, your textbook with you. Okay, it should look like that because it's a cube. So it's going to resemble that. Where do we start at? Well, we have a 1 here, it's positive, so it moves it up. So where do we start at now? Yep, 0, 1. So that is going to be where we start at. Okay, so we're going to start at 0, 1. And what number's in front? 5. Yep, so we're going to have to make that a 5 over 1. So we're going to go up 5, and then we're going to go over 1. And that makes it then. So over 1. So that's going to make my second dot right here at 1, comma, add 5 to that 6. Now we connect them together like that. But that is only half of it now, isn't it? What's the other side look like? It's not going up to make a U. It looks like that. So it has to look like that. That's what my graph needs to look like. So now we go back to our starting point here. We know we need to go down. So we're going to have to go down 5 and back 1, right? And that's going to make my second point right about here, which is at minus 1 
um, it's at it's at one. Yep. So it's going to be at minus four, right? Because we're at one already here. Okay. And you don't have to always plot the points. I do just to make it a little bit easier to see. But you don't have to always plot the points as long as you get that first one. Now when we connect them together, that makes my graph. And so that is what it looks like. So what did we do? We moved the graph up five, uh, sorry, up one unit, and we made it narrower by a factor of five. So it shrank it in. Let's try another one. Once you get used to doing these, these are, these are not bad. They're actually kind of fun to do. They're very easy once you understand the basic concepts. And how about cube root of x and how about plus 4? Okay, so let's look at this one. Now, first thing we identify is the picture. So this is a cube root. So when we go to the back cover of our textbook, the cube root graph looks like that. Okay, It's like a cube only on its side. So it looks like that. That's what our basic graph should look like. So that's the first thing I do is figure out the pattern. What does it look like? It should look like that. What does the 4 here do? Up 4. Okay. And so where are we now going to start at? All right. We're going to start at 0, 4. We have to be very, very careful with the number in front. It has to be over 1. If it's a fraction, make it over 1. So it's a minus 1 half, we've got to make it over 1. It has to always be over 1. If you don't make it over 1, it's going to be too stretched out. So it has to be over 1. If you, if you just make it up 1 over 2, it's going to be way too stretched out because this is not really a slope. It's close to it, but it's not. So you have to make it over 1. So I make that 1 half over 1. So we're now going to go down a half of a unit over 1. So we're going to go down a half over 1. So that makes my second dot, if I want to label it, that makes it 1, 3.5, okay? Because we went down a half. So over 1 down a half. And then when we curve them, okay, it curves like that. Now notice, instead of it going up, what is ours doing? Down. down. Why is it going down? Because it's negative. Right? Negative makes it flip over. What about the other side? It needs to look like this. So it can't it, it needs to go like that, doesn't it? How do we get the other side? We go up about a half over about one. So that's going to make my second dot here at minus 1. And if we add a half to that, about 4 and a half, 4.5. And we make our curve. And there's our graph. And it looks very similar to this one. What happened to it? It's upside down, right? We got flipped over. And it's a little bit smaller. So instead of it being 1, it's at about a half. So it's, it's smaller, got squeezed inward. We also moved it what? Up four units. Now we're going to look at how to move it left and right. So let's review everything we've talked about so far. And then we'll add on the horizontal shifting. So we're going to review what we've covered so far. So the first thing we noticed is numbers on the end. Okay, numbers on the end. 
If they're positive, they move it up. If they're negative, they're going to move it down, right? That's my y-intercept. So positive's up, negative is down. Numbers in front. of the x. Numbers in front of the x, they're going to be like the slope. Okay, so that's going to be like the slope. Rise over run. Okay, so numbers in front are like the slope. They're not really the slope because these lines don't have a slope. These are nonlinear, but it's close enough to a slope that we can use that. So it is like the slope, and it's still rise over run. What we haven't talked about yet is numbers inside the operation. So numbers inside the operation. Here's how they work. So numbers inside the operation. And what do I mean by inside the operation? inside the parentheses or under the root. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So those are, are going along with the operation, inside the operation. Now, opposite of what you think you, they would do. So if they're inside the parentheses or underneath that root, they go back to the left if they're positive. If they're negative, they move forward to the right. It is the opposite of what you think they would be doing. So the, the positives move it back, the negatives move it forward. So it's the opposite, and the reason for that is you'll be setting it to zero. So now let's go ahead and graph another one. Look at this. Oh, did I? Yep. Did you have a question real quick? Uh huh. Yep. Yep. I've got an extra one up here. Yep. See if this one works. Yep. You're welcome. And if it doesn't, we've got more there too. So. Okay. So let's talk about what we just did. Numbers on the end. If it's added on the end, that moves it up and down. Positives go up. Negatives go down. Number in front, that is your slope, like to it. It's, it's not really your slope, but for, for this, it works for it. Numbers inside move it left and right. If it's positive, it's going to move it back to the left, opposite of what you think it should do. Negatives move it to the right. Now, where is that 3 located at? Is that 3 on the end? No. That 3 is inside the absolute value, and it's negative. So what's it going to do? Opposite of what you think, move it forward to the right, isn't it? Opposite of what you think it should do. What's the graph going to look like? It's an absolute value, so the graph should resemble a V like that, shouldn't it? Is everyone okay with that so far? What about the 2? It's in front. What does that do? 2 over 1. Yep. Okay. Where are we going to now start at? Uh, not 0, 0, right? We're going to start at positive 3, because we're moving it to the right, comma, 0. Because we're moving it forward, right? See the arrows? We're moving it forward 3 units, and it's at 0. Now we can start drawing our graph here. Okay, so let's, let's look at this one now. Okay, we're going to start at 3, 0. So that's over 3 units. Right there, that's at 3, 0. And what are we then going to do? Up 2 over 1. So up 2 over 1. That makes my second dot at about 4, 2, doesn't it? And we can connect them together. Now, we are going to use a straight line, right, because these are absolute values. 
so it makes a nice V. So make sure it looks like a V and not a curve. So it needs to look like that. Now, how do we get the other side? Well, to get the other side, we do the opposite. Yep, so to get the other side, we're going to go still up 2, okay, back 1, so that's at 2, 2. And we connect it together, and that makes our V. Okay, and that's what it should look like. So what did we do to the graph? We moved it what? To the right, three units. We also made it narrow, right? Because two, normally it looks like this. Okay, so normally it looks like it'd be like this with one. But when you put the two in front, it makes it like that, it makes it more narrow. Okay, let's do one where we have to do all the translations now. I do what now? Okay, why is it at 4, 2? Okay, because let's look at our original. We started at what? Okay, we started it at 3, 0, didn't we? Okay, now what's my slope, the number in front? Up 2 over 1. So if we start here, we're going to have to go up 2, so that makes the 2, and then we went over 1, which makes it does that make sense now? Start at your original point, up 2 over 1. And then we get the other side by going up 2, back 1. And then it makes a V. Why does it make a V? Because it's an absolute value. Okay, let's look at another one. Once you kind of understand the process, they're, they're not really that hard. You don't have to do any calculations at all. It's just understanding the graphs. So let's look at this one. So, so let's try to look at this one. Now, where are we, what, what is the graph going to look like? Let's answer that question first. Yep, so it's going to look like a V, isn't it? Looks like a V. So first thing we did was we identified the fact that it was an absolute value, so make a V. Now, we look at it, and we look at all the pieces. This two is on the end. This 2 is negative, so I draw arrows, makes it go down, isn't it? This 4. 4 is positive, opposite, the way I remember, opposite of what you think it should do. So that's going to move it back to the left, isn't it? What about this 1 third? We have to write it as over 1, so that's minus 1 third over 1. Has to be over 1. If you don't put it over 1, your graph is going to be too stretched out. So it has to be over 1. If it's not, it won't look correct. Where are we going to start at now? Okay, well, let's look. It was 4, right? We're going back to the left, so that's going to make it a negative 4. Negative what? 2. Is everyone okay with that? Does everyone see how we got the starting point? Okay, follow the way the arrows go. Needs to look like this, the V. We're almost done here. So back four, down two. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to go down about a third over what? One. So we're just going to go down a little bit, down about a third, just over just a little bit, and over about one. And you could put in the ordered pairs if you want to, but there may not be enough room. Right? So I went down about a third over one. That makes that piece there. Connect them together. 
What about the other side? Down about a third, back about one, and we connect it together there. And that's what it's going to look like. You can label the ordered pairs if you want to, but there's really not enough room and it gets kind of messy. So as long as you've got the original starting point here, we know what to do. Now, what happened to my graph? We, yep, okay. We went down two units originally, right? We went down two, we went back four units, then we flipped the graph over. Why? Because this was negative. And what else happened to it? It went from being like this to way wider. Why? Because it's a third. Third is tall, so it stretched it out. This way made it more wider that way. So that's what your graph will look like. Now I'm going to give you a picture, and you're going to find the equation that it came from. So we need to figure out what equation this came from. It's just the opposite of what we've been doing. So what operation do you think this is going to be? Look at your pictures and figure it out, okay? It's going to be the square root. So we know that. So we know that we're going to start off with the square root. What are we doing? Let's, let's do the end part first. We move this up how many units? Uh, sorry, sorry, over four, right? Up three. We'll do, we'll do the up and down part first, right? So four, three. So we went up, we went over four, right? Up three. So that three, we'll put that on the end because that's going to be my up part. Nope, because that's moving it up, okay? Next, we're going to look at the inside part. I just did the back first because that's where I like to start at. Because we moved this graph up three, so I put it here at plus three. What else did we do? Okay, we moved it forward, or to the right, four units. So when we put it in here, we're not going to put a plus four, we're going to put a what? Because this makes it do what? Or, sorry, I, yep, let me draw the arrow in the right direction. That's going to move it forward, and that's what we want. We went up three, forward four. So the three went on the end because that's your up and down part. The four, we switch our sign and make it a negative because we shifted it to the right. Now, don't worry about a number in front because they, they always make it one for you. Because okay, if you look at this, it would just be one. Let's do another one of these. And see if we can figure out the next graph. Try and find the equation here. And so we'll do six and um, well, let's see if we can figure this one out. Okay. Which one do you think it is? Do you think it's a cube or a cube root? Cube root. Okay, make sure you look at it because cube root is on its side, right? It looks like that. Cube would look more like that. So this is going to be a cube root. Now, is there a number on the end? Yes. What am I doing to this graph? I am moving it up what? Six. So the six is going on the end outside. Not inside, outside. Because this 6 moves it up. Is there anything inside the cube root? No. So we don't have to put the 0. So all we put there is the x. Now there is more to it. 
What's going to be in front of this, do you think? Well, don't, don't. Okay. Normally, a cube root looks like this. Right? That's a normal cube root. Uh huh. Yes, we'll put the negative in front. Why? Because our graph looks like that. Our graph is going down from left to right. The original should do what? Up. So that means this is going to have a negative. Don't worry about numbers in front because they just always need the one there. And on these, I made them multiple choice in your homework. So when you look at these, you can figure it out pretty easily. As long as you understand the translations. So are we okay with those so far? Do we kind of see how we're graphing all of these? I know this is brand new. It's not that difficult, but it is brand new. The next topic then that we've got to cover is the greatest integer. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, you need to see this stuff. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay, so the greatest integer is what we're going to be looking at next. And it's going to be a case of stairs. And I saved that one because it's a little bit different from the others. So we're going to be looking at the greatest integer next. And it's not a continuous function, it's a, a case of stairs. Okay, so I'm going to move that up here. And we're going to talk about the greatest integer. And these are what are called greatest integer bars. Not absolute value bars, these are greatest integer bars. These are called greatest integer bars. And what they do is they make you round down. We're not really so concerned about that. We're going to focus more on the picture, the graph of the greatest integer. These are also in the back of your textbook. I'm going to draw a little bit bigger picture so we see what it looks like. Okay, but this one right here is your greatest integer function. And it looks like a case of stairs. Right? Going up. Now, one thing we have to remember is we always have to start with a closed circle. So make sure that when you start this, you always start with a closed circle. Very, very important. They're going to be graphed the exact same way. So this is going to be graphed the exact same way that we graphed all the others. So first thing we look at is that one. Okay, that one on the end, what does that do? Up one unit. Is there anything inside the operation? No. What about the four out in front? Four over one, isn't it? Okay, so where are we going to start at? You're going to start at 0, 1. Nothing new. It's, it is a little bit different than the others. But all the translations behave exactly the same. So we start now at 0, 1. And make sure we have a, a closed circle there. Now, what are we going to do from there? up four so one two three four and over one so that makes my second closed circle way up here and that's going to be at one comma five okay and then we draw our stairs and you can draw more of them but you need just a couple in each direction okay how do we get the other side because we know it needs to also go down it needs to look like a case of stairs so we go back to our starting point, and we want it to go back to the left. So now we go down four, so one, two, three, four, back one. So that makes my next closed circle right here at minus one, minus three, doesn't it? And it's going to make sure that that open circle is right underneath it. 
And you can even do another one if you want. You could go down another four. You could go down another four, back another one, and that would make it clear over here at minus two, uh, minus seven, so it would still look the same. All you need is a couple of, of, of lines in each direction. So that's what it looks like, okay? It looks like a case of stairs. Where do we start at? Zero, one, so we move this graph up one unit. Okay, and what happened to the case of stairs? Instead of it being like this, it's like that, because it's four times as tall. The gap between them is, is four times, because this is one, ours is four, so it's way bigger. And all you need is a couple in each direction, so you see that it looks like a case of stairs. Now, the closed circle is always where you start at. So you start with a closed circle, and this is going up. Let's look at one more of these. Uh -huh. uh, uh, which which part now? Uh, which part? The uh, okay. Yeah, you see all the numbers. All right. uh, oh, this this right here. Okay, that just tells me that I start with a closed circle. So I start. No, it's a dot. That tells me when I'm at, at one zero, I begin with a closed circle. The other part has the open circle. So that tells you that you always start with an, a closed circle, a dot, a, a filled in dot. Okay, and the other part gets the open ones. Below, because there's always a closed circle and then below it is an open circle. Closed circle on top, open circle below, the non-filled in dot. Does that make sense now? Okay. Well, so let's do another one. And let's try to graph this one. All right. So. This one should look like a case of stairs again. And it's just a quick sketch. So it's going to look like that. So I always just quickly sketch it over to the side. So I know my graph needs to look like this somewhere. Now, what's going to happen to this? What does that 4 do? Yep, it's a positive 4. It is inside the operation. So it's going to move it back four units, four units to the left. Is there anything on the end? No. So where am I now going to start at? Not zero, zero. I'm going to start at minus four, zero. Yep. Does that make sense now? Right? Because with no number on the end, so we're going to start at minus four, zero. This one we're going up from left to right. What is ours going to do? Ours is going to go down. Why is ours going to go down from left to right? Because this is negative, right? So we're going to start back four units, four units to the left. And we always, always begin with a closed circle. And that's going to be at minus four, zero. And now, what are we going to do from this minus 4, 0? We're going to go down 2, forward 1, and make a new closed circle. So that next one is going to be at minus 3, because we went over 1, down 2, so that's at minus 2. And we can do another one, if we need to. We can go forward again, down 1, or sorry, down 2, so that makes the next dot right here, at about minus two, minus four. And we connect them together like this. And you can add more to it if you need to. Sorry about that. But that's what it looks like. And you can even go more in the opposite direction because you can see at minus four, you can go up two over one. So you can make another dot right there as well. 
no, sorry, a minus a 5. Oh, minus 5, positive 2. And that would make that one look perfect. What we need to make sure it looks like a case of stairs. Now look at it in this case. What's happening to it? As I go from left to right, I'm not going up, I'm going what? Down. down. Why am I going down? Because of the negative in front. That makes it go down from left to right. That makes it a decreasing function. Is everyone okay with this? Does everyone see how this is kind of working? Now we're going to look at piecewise defined functions. And this is the last part of this section. And these are going to have to be done in pieces or parts. And piecewise defined functions are done in, in, in several different levels. And he's in here, so we've got the right order. And I'll make sure they kind of match up with the way the homework has them. That way it's, we go in the same direction. Just I wanted to make sure it matches up with the same direction as the homework has them. Okay, how about if x is less than or equal to, how about uh, minus 3, if x is between minus 3 and positive 5, and this one's going to be greater than or equal to 5. Okay, so this is called a piecewise defined function, and it's something that's new. It's done in different pieces or levels. In this case, there are three different levels. So there's three different levels with that. What we're going to be looking at is we're going to be learning how now to find the requested value. So we're going to be plugging a number in, and we're going to figure out which row it goes on into and evaluate it down. So we're going to do three or four of these to go along with this function, and then I'll look at one from your homework. And we're going to find the requested value. That's going to be the directions. We're going to find the requested value. And I'm going to have you do, let's say, four of these to start with. We can add more if we need to. Should we separate all these out here because each one's separate? Okay, so these are all separate questions. Now, we need to figure out when we begin which row we plug the number in. So let's talk about what each of these rows work, work with. So the first one says if x is what? less than or equal to a negative 3. So what are we looking for for this row? Numbers that are negative 3 or less, right? If the number is negative 3 or less, it goes here. What about the second one? It's got numbers that are be between minus 3 and positive what? 5. Not including the 5, though, or the 3. And what about the last row, that row 3? That is for numbers that are what? 5 or bigger, right? Greater than or equal to 5, so 5 or bigger, 5 or larger. So on each of these, we're going to figure out which row it goes in, plug the value in, and find the answer. It only goes into one of the different rows. So the first one, which row is it going to go into? 1, 2, or 3? Okay, row 3. And if it goes into row 3, what's my function here? x squared. So what am I going to have to do? Which is 25. That's it. You do not put it into all three of them. Only plug it into the row it needs to go into. What about negative 2? Where would that be at? Which row? Row 2. 
And what's going to come out on this one, row 2? It's a constant function, isn't it? So it's going to come out to be just the number 4. It's a constant function. What about 8? Which row does that fall under? Okay, That falls under row 3 again, doesn't it? And row 3 would be down here, so what would we do? 8 squared, which is then what? 64. What about negative 9? Which one would that fall under? This looks like row 1, doesn't it? And plugging it in, that would be minus 9 plus 1, which is then what? Minus 8. Let's do one more. What about f of 0? Where would f of 0 be at? Uh, that would be, watch your values here. Okay. Which one? f of 0, that would be where? In row 2. Yep, no problem. And what is row 2? Constant function of 4. Does it make sense how that's working now? I'm going to do question 12 from your homework. You can do 13. So I'm going to do question 12. You're going to be responsible for question 13. This is your homework, 2, 6, and 2, 7. We're going to look now at question 12. You're going to be doing question 13. Okay, so we're looking at 12. We have a function. We want to find f of 6. So that means your x is 6. So which one would it fall under? 1, 2, or 3. Which one? It's going to fall under row 3, right? And what is row 3? Just so we know, row 3 is f of x equals x. So what would this one equal, do you think? 6. That's all you have to do. Did I have to plug it into all three of them? No. Only plug it into the row it belongs. So just so we know, what about 13? F of negative 6, it would fall where? Okay, It's going to fall in this one, isn't it? Row 1. And what would it be? It would be 8 times a negative 6, which is a negative 48, plus 1 makes it a negative what? 47. Is everyone okay with how I do that one? Well, you just plug the value in. That's it. Negative what? Uh, no, it should be negative 47, right? Because if I plug in a negative 6, 8 times negative 6, that's a negative 48, isn't it? Plus 1 more makes it a, a negative 47. So it's going to be a negative 47. But you can work it out on your own. Okay, it's an easy one to work out. Now we've got to learn how to graph them. So that's what we're doing next. They're going to be like this one. So we learned how to um, plug values in. Now we're going to learn how to graph them. And when we go to graph these, we need to make sure that we put the open and the closed circles in the correct place. So strictly less than, strictly greater than, they get an open circle. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, those get the closed circle. So when we go to graph these, we need to make sure what gets an open circle and what gets a closed circle. Very, very important. So let's try to graph one of these. And you have to be very, very careful, too, 
with the way the inequalities go because they can be flipped around. You've got to make sure you know which one is which and which way it goes. So this is going to be row one and this is going to be row two. Now, the first row, it's greater than or equal to two, so it's going to get a closed circle. The second one gets an open circle. Okay, so I'm going to slow down a bit so we can get caught up here. Okay, so when we go to graph this, it's going to be done in two separate parts, two separate pieces. Strictly less than, strictly greater than, those get an open circle. That's why this one here in row two is going to have an open circle at the end. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, those get a closed circle here. So you need to make sure we know what gets an open circle and what gets a closed circle. Now we're going to pick points. The first thing we always do is we plug our value in. So we're going to look now at row number one. And we need two points so we can connect them together. We're going to plug in one into row number one. We're going to plug in, sorry, not one, uh, two. So x equals two. If I plug in x equals two in here, what do I get out? Eight. eight. So that's y equals eight. So that is the new ordered pair to eight. Now we need another point in row one. What is row one? Row one is for values of x that are what? Bigger than three, right? Or sorry, two. Greater than or equal to two. So we, we're looking for numbers that are two or larger. So we need a number bigger than two. So we're going to use three. And if I plug in three into this one, what do I get out? Yep, eight again. So that gives me now the next ordered pair, which is 3, 8. I'm going to go ahead and, and plot those points. And come back to the next part. So this is going to have to be done in pieces. So we've got 2, 8. 8. And that's right there. And it gets a closed circle. Okay, so that's that piece. What's my next point? 3, 8, which is here. If I connect them together, that is going to make a what? Constant function, horizontal line, isn't it? That is row 1. I'm going to try to use different colors, so hopefully you can keep track of them. So that's row 1. It's a horizontal line. Got 3. Sorry, at 8, I mean. It goes through 2, 8, and, and 3, 8. Horizontal line at 8. Now, what about row 2? Let's go back up here, and let's look at row 2. We always plug in the number it starts with, so always plug in that 2. Even if it doesn't belong in there, plug it in. So plug in 2. Even though it doesn't go in there, plug it in. That's going to be minus 4, minus 2, which that makes it a minus 6. So now my ordered pair is going to be 2, comma, minus what? 6. We need another point in row 2. What is row 2 for? It is for numbers that are what? Yep, less than 2. So we need a number less than 2. You could pick 1, you could pick 0. It doesn't matter. Let's just pick 1. Okay, I'm going to plug in 1. If I plug in 1 into here, then what do I get? Minus 4, minus 1, that makes it minus what? 5. As an ordered pair, what does that now look like? 1, negative 5. Okay, now we've got everything that we need. So we're at 2, negative 6. That's where we start, start at. 6. So that's clear down here with an open circle. And I'm going to graph this one in blue. So this one we're going to do in blue. So two negative sixes here. What's my next point? One negative five, isn't it? Okay, so one negative five is right here. 
And if I connect those together, this is going to connect together, make a line, and it looks like that. Now, notice the open and closed circles are on top of each other, right? That's this closed circle there. It makes your line. So look at this. This is a piecewise defined function. It's discontinuous because it's done in separate sections or pieces. We'll do one more. This one's going to have three parts. We'll have to do 2-8 on Tuesday. So we won't get to 2-8. We'll have to do it on Tuesday. So let's look at one more of these. This one's going to have three rows, and it's going to be done the exact same way. And I'm just going to make it a little bit different with different numbers involved. That's okay. And let's say if x is about less than or equal to 0, if x is in between 0 and 4, and let's say if x is greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so it's going to be done the exact same way. Only this one has three rows. And so we need to make sure we know what gets the open circles and what gets the closed circles. So this one, closed circle, this one open circle, right? An open circle. And then this one, what does it get? Closed circle, right? So that gets open circle because of those. And that one gets a closed circle. Now, we need two points in each row. All you have to do is two. You plot them and then you connect them together. So let's start with the zero. Okay, we're going to look at row number one. I'm going to plug in 0. You always begin with the part, the number that's given. And let me go ahead and pass out the sign-in sheet. This way I don't forget. Let's make sure you sign the sign-in sheet. This will be the last question that we're going to look at. Okay, so let's look at this one. I'm going to plug in 0. If I plug in 0, that is then... 2 times 0 squared, which is what? 0. So we need our two points. So that first point is 0, 0. Now we need another number in that row. What does this one go for? This one goes for numbers that are what? Watch the way the inequality points, points to the left. So we are looking for numbers that are less than 0. So let's plug in a number less than 0. How about negative 1? Negative 1 is less than 0. Plug that in, and that's 2 times a negative 1 squared. And when I square a negative, what does it become? Positive 2. So now I've got the point negative 1, positive 2. And I'm going to go ahead and graph this one. I'll graph this one in blue. So that's what we're looking at. So let's plot our two points. Our first point is at 0, 0. I can't put it all on the screen, so I've got to move this up a bit. We're going to graph it down here. So my first point is at 0, 0. And it gets a what? Open or closed circle? Closed circle. So it gets a closed circle right here at 0, 0. What's my next point? Minus 1, two. Minus one positive 2. So that's clear up here. Now, when I connect them together, I'm not going to use a straight line. I'm going to use a curve. Why? Because this is what? This is squared. So don't use a straight line. Connect them together with a little bit of a curve because it's, it's a square. So don't just connect them together straight line. Make a little bit of a curve. Make it look kind of like that. Okay. So there is that piece. That is row one. They have to be done in pieces or sections. For the second row, all 
right? For the second row, we plug the values in again. So we're going to plug in 0, and we're going to plug in 4. So let's now look at row number 2. And we're going to plug in 0. If I plug in 0 in row 2, what do I get out? 5. So that is my ordered pair now. 0, 5. I'm also going to plug in 4. Right. And if I plug in 4, what do I get out? 5 again. So that is my new point, 4, comma, what? 5. And I'm going to try to graph this one in green so we can tell the difference here. Uh-huh. Right, but we're going to plug it in. And, and when we plug them in, we're going to replace those with open circles. Okay, so that's why we can plug it in because it's not really in there, but we can evaluate it down. We'll use an open circle there. Because it's really close to it, but not exactly. But just remember, you plug it in, and that tells you if you use an open or closed circle. So we know these are going to have an open circle. Where are my points at? They're at 0, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we use an open circle. Where's my next point? 4, 5. So that's going to be over 1, 2, 3, 4. And still up to 5 again. Yep, and it's going to be, it's a constant function, isn't it? Right? Yep, so that's going to be a horizontal line there. So it's that horizontal bit there. The graphs of these are a little bit unusual because they're all, they're, they're, they're done in pieces. Okay, what about row three? We need to plug our values in for row three. So I'm going to plug my 4 in. If I plug in x equals 4, that gives you 3 times 4, right? Plus 1, that gives you 13. So that would be the point, 4, 13. We need another value in there. So this is for numbers that are 4 or larger. So how about we plug in 5? If I plug in 5, I get 3 times 5 plus 1, which makes it then what? 16. And that's that point, 5, 16. And they're going to be way up there. So I'm going to try to draw it the best that I can here. I'm going to call this 13 clear up here. And 14 is going to be about this. But, well, let's make 16 in this 13. We'll just put, kind of make it to fit the best that we can. So we need 4, 13. So it's going to be over 4 and up about 13 units. So we'll just make this 13. So this is going to be a closed circle here at about 4, 13. It won't quite fit on the paper. And I'm going to do this one in blue so we can separate the colors out. So this one's going to be at yep, 4, 13. I, I can't make it all the way up there. So that's going to be there. Now what about the next one? Okay, 5, 16, so that's going to be clear up here. And my graph kind of went off the paper. This one's going to get a straight line, though, isn't it? Yep, because it's a linear function, and so that's what it looks like. I only gave you one of these in your homework to work through. Now, let's talk about our homework quickly here. We didn't do 2, 8. We'll have to do 2, 8 next time. We're going to do that next class period. So what did we cover today? We did 2.6 and 7. You should be able to do them all. Okay, you should be able to do them all. We'll do 2.8 next class period. Now, 2.8 is a short section. What we're going to do on Tuesday is we're going to do 2.8. It should not take long to do. And then we're going to work on our practice exam because our next exam is going to be on Thursday. So our next exam over graphing will be on Thursday. Tuesday, we're going to do 2A and prepare for that exam. So that's what we're going to be doing.